In a historic land known to the West as Arakan, there existed a great and powerful Buddhist kingdom for many, many centuries. Obscured by history and politics, this remote, isolated, and little-known land is now becoming known and recognized. The legacy of Arakan is still very much alive, and the Buddhists of Arakan are proud of their unique culture. However, they are in great danger as encroaching Islamic forces are trying to annihilate them and all other non-Muslims and destroy the deeply rooted indigenous Buddhist culture and even Buddhism itself. The Arakanese in their own homeland for centuries have had to fight off and repel countless attempts by Muslims to destroy them. For 1,400 years, Muslim armies have annihilated every Buddhist culture they encountered in massive genocides from the formerly Buddhist lands of ancient Persia, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Central Asia, and India. 500 years ago, the Muslim genocidal conquest reached the borders of the Buddhist kingdom of Arakan. Muslim armies tried and failed many times to conquer the Arakanese. If ever the Muslims succeed, this unique culture of the world would be gone forever in a massive genocidal ethnic cleansing. A magnificent royal city called Mia'u was the capital of the last dynasty of the powerful and prosperous Buddhist kingdom of Arakan, from 1433 until 1784. 1784 marks the end of the Arakan Empire by the invasion and conquest of the Burmese kingdom of Ava. In 1826, the British annexed Arakan, incorporating it into the British Indian Empire. During World War II, Arakan was the scene of horrific fighting as British and American troops fought ferocious battles to drive the Japanese out. Arakan, as part of the new country of Burma, achieved independence in 1948. The ancient royal capital, Mia'u, with its many Buddhist temples and structures spread over a very large area, constitute one of the largest ruined Buddhist cities in the world and is the heart of the Rakhine Buddhist identity. Portuguese, Dutch, and British writers complimented Mia'u as a city comparable and even greater at that time than Amsterdam, London, and Venice. In 1639, the Portuguese Jesuit Father A. Farinha wrote, Atacan is a second Venice. Its streets are rivers. Its gardens, valleys. Its ramparts, mountains. They have chosen for their city a site fortified by nature and impregnable by force of arms. In 1660, the Dutch traveler Gamier Schurden wrote, as we ascended sufficiently high up the mountain, we could descry the city of Arakan and the golden roofs of the palace, which shone magnificently in the rays of the sun. Here and there, both on the mountain and in the valleys, the eye fell upon many Buddhist pagodas, which made the view most enchanting. Indeed, it would be difficult to imagine a more entrancing landscape. For centuries, Arakan was the strongest kingdom in the Bay of Bengal area and beyond. It ruled over vast areas, including Chittagong in present-day Bangladesh, 
which itself has a history of close to 2,000 years of Vedic, Hindu, and Buddhist empires. The most influential foreign power for the kingdom of Arakan was undoubtedly the Portuguese, who were the first Western powers to navigate, explore, and trade in faraway Asia. The Portuguese and Arakanese formed a powerful alliance. The Portuguese had the best and fastest ships, the most advanced weaponry of the time, and the best navigation skills in the world at that time, and the Arakanese gained greatly from their alliance. There were several thousand Portuguese living in the royal city Miau, also in the Portuguese town of Dianga, close to Chittagong. From the 15 to 1700s, Miau was at its highest and most prosperous period and was a highly developed world city. The design and layout of Miau and its architecture, temples, sculptures were as great or even greater than other grand cities of Asia and Europe, such as Pagan, Angkor Wat, Ayutthaya, Prambanan, Lisbon, Venice, Amsterdam, and London. Miau had complex defense systems, utilizing the natural hills, streams, and rivers, while incorporating moats, earthen ramparts, walls, and forts to protect the central city and palace. The Arcanese ships were fast, their sailing techniques were skillful, and their weaponry was advanced, all due to Portuguese influence and the alliance they had with each other. Being a port city, Miau hosted many different people of many faiths. Buddhist from Ceylon, Siam, Cambodia, and the Burmese kingdoms of Tangu and Pegu. Hindus from the Indian ports of Musalipatam and Nagapatam, the Maldive Islands and Champa. Christians of Portugal, Holland, France, and Great Britain. And Muslims from Persia, Aceh, Bengal, and Malacca, all who came and went with an astonishing assortment of goods to trade, bargain, buy, and sell. The Augustinian friar Sebastian Manrique, who lived in Aracan for eight years in the early 1600s, described life in the capital of Miau. So numerous were the different classes of dress and language that the eyes were kept busy distinguishing the different nationalities by their apparel. All these foreigners formed streets of shops filled with a great variety of such articles as are produced by the earth. Diamonds, rubies, sapphires, emeralds, topazes, gold and silver in plates and bars, copper, Amber, musk, incense, comfort, indigo, borax, quicksilver, saltpeter, pepper, cinnamon, ginger, cardamoms, nutmeg, mace, and cloves. Many cloths of the finest cotton and much rich silk were on view, with ebony, ivory, and porcelain. In spite of the great crowds, there was no confusion but many dances and other entertainments were going on in the midst of them, and the whole scene was most festive. The number of people going to and fro along the canals in every kind of boat was no less. Arakan is littered with an astonishing amount of ancient Buddhist relics, ruins, artifacts, and temples. There are ancient Buddhist artifacts in rice fields, forests and villages poking out of the thick foliage. Anytime someone digs a hole there, there is a good chance that they will find an ancient statue, relic, or foundation stones of a centuries-old structure. There are amazing spiraling tunnels under some of the biggest temples of Miau, with astonishingly detailed and painted stone carvings depicting so many figurines, from earthy common people and animals to mythological and celestial beings. One can walk in concentric circles around and around, reaching a central shrine in the middle. 
These are very unique to Arakan. One does not see this technique of temple building, nor these stylings of all the carved figurines, animals, and celestial deities in surrounding areas. These are indeed cultural treasures of the world. Also very unique to Arakan are the Buddhist caves carved into the exposed rock cliffs. These caves are in Ponadjan, an hour or two from Sitwe. This is in Paukta, several hours by very pleasant boat from Sitwe. This is in southern Rakhine State, near the very pleasant town of Chaukpu. Notice the fascinating figures that are prominent in the folk and mythological lore of the Arakanese. In northern Rakhine State, we have Zichang, close to Ratedong, with many folk-like figures on the outside and then mesmerizing colors and serenity inside the caves. most magnificent Buddhist caves of Arkhan are here in Gudong, also very close to the town of Ratedong in northern Rakhine State. The mythological figures are a fascinating legend of a world culture that the world barely knows. All of these caves are very unique to Arakan and deserve to be recognized, saved, protected, and preserved. This site in Gudong and the previous site in Zichang are both in great danger of being destroyed forever. In 2012, thousands of Muslims marched over from nearby Muslim villages to the large Buddhist village of Gudong, which sits in front of these Buddhist caves. As the Muslim mobs started to attack and burn the village, Every Buddhist man and boy had to run out and form a defensive line to protect the village and their sisters, daughters, mothers, and wives. The goal of the Muslims was to burn the entire village, kill or drive out all of the 1,500 villagers, and then they would have an orgy of destruction as they would break and destroy everything you have seen here. The Muslims believe they have the divine right to completely destroy all statues and figures because the Quran tells them to. The Buddhists held a line and prevented the Muslims from achieving their goal. However, 11 men and boys were killed as they defended their village, their women, and kids. The legacy of Arkhan lives on. These are the descendants of those who built the magnificent structures behind them. This land is the one and only homeland of the Rakhine Buddhists. The men play sports, the women talk at the wells, and life is simple, or it could be, if not for the dangers from an alien culture who wants to exterminate all of these people and take the land from them. The year is full of Buddhist festivals. This is downtown Sitwe, the capital of Rakhine State. The city is more like a large town with a population of 100,000, dense with Buddhist pagodas, temples, and monasteries. This street and many parts of Sitwe were set on fire in June 2012 by the Bengali Muslims, and the Muslims will attack, burn, and kill again and again as they have in the past and as they will in the future. The people who are this living legacy of the kingdom of Arakan deserve to be known and protected, and their culture can be recognized and preserved as a unique world culture, and those who want to destroy it must be stopped. Currently, much of the world has maligned these indigenous people, buying into the false and manipulative media, which has fooled so many. Truth will ultimately prevail, and this ancestral and cultural homeland of the Rakhine Buddhists can be peaceful and prosperous once again.
Thank you.